Hold it. Here's another example. Uh, mother gives her son a birthday present. Two neckties, a blue one and a brown one. Now, he shows up at the breakfast table the next morning wearing the brown one. His mother looks at him and says, uh, what's the matter? Didn't you like the blue one? <laughs> uh, what's a serious idea in that joke, Wally? Sometimes you can't do anything to please your parents. Okay, that's part of it. Cindy? Well, it's more than that. It says parents can be so uptight that they lose their sense of perspective. Yeah, that's in there, too. Sorry, I'm late. Where you been? My car went bananas on me. I barely got here at all. We'll take a seat. We'll talk about it after class. All right. We're talking about how humor can be used to make serious comments. Who's next? Uh, JT. I think that the real serious underlying theme of the joke is only weirdos wear neckties. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, Mr. Terry. <laughs> they ask me next time I'm wearing a necktie. Um, Terry. Well, it's kind of a sad story, Mr. Tanner, so why did we laugh at it? Ah. Anybody. All right, answer it tomorrow as a lead into tragic comedy. Chapter 7, read it. Chapter 7. Well, I guess I really blew it this time, huh? Yesterday you were held up by a traffic accident. Friday your radio alarm didn't go off. And I was up all last night studying for a chemistry test. Honest. I thought the problem was your car. Well, it's a combination of both. You know me, Mr. Tanner. I'll make it up. Ron, you're too bright to fall as far behind. What's wrong? Don't sweat it, Mr. Tanner. Okay? Well, can I go now? Yeah. Everything's okay with you, right? Right. Hey, Dad, listen. What could be wrong, huh? Except losing that lousy game. If that hillbilly hadn't goofed that one foul shot... We were way behind. Yeah, you're right. There was no way we could get back in it, that for sure. Oh, I'm gonna hit the sack, son. You got a big day tomorrow. We had a great time tonight, didn't we, sport? Sure. That's what it's all about, Ronnie. Now, my dad... I never could talk to him. Would you believe that? Never his whole life. Oh, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bug bite. if I turn it into the office. That's probably what somebody figured would make a terrific practical joke. Yeah. But I tasted it. That's vodka. <laughs> That's incredible. You are a rotten liar, Ron. Mr. Tanner, I'm telling you the truth. I wouldn't touch that stuff. It'd rot your stomach out. Go ahead, taste it. it tastes like gasoline. You're caught, Ron. Face it. Well, that's really heavy. You coming in here, accusing me of drinking. <laughs> that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Is it? Sure. Ask 
ask my friends if I drink. Go ahead, ask my parents. I used to think you were a terrific teacher. But you have really disappointed me. Then we're both disappointed. Hey, there's the final bell. Now we're both going to be late for our class. We haven't finished this conversation, Ron. Right? Well, that's OK with me. I've got nothing to hide. No, I saw him drop the bottle in the trash can. Now, he admitted he took a drink from it. And he still had the guts to make up a story like that. Luke, have you ever known any hard drinkers? Yeah, sure, but just because a boy laid some lies on me doesn't make him a hard drinker. You ought to come to one of our AA meetings. Listen to some of the really fancy lies we've told our friends and our families and ourselves. You mean you believed your own lies? Oh, sure. Nobody wants to admit he's an alcoholic even to himself. An alcoholic? Come on, Lloyd. Ron Gibbons? That's the way he sounds to me. Maybe it takes one to know one. Lloyd, if you're right, I'm out of my ballpark. JT. Hey, thanks. Well, what do you do about a kid like that? Well, I can tell you what we learned at AA. Mostly what you don't do about it. Shoot. Well, you don't tell him not to drink. Ever. Why not? That just gives him an excuse for drinking. It makes you the heavy. Prohibition didn't work. Lloyd, we're talking about a 17-year-old kid. What do we do, just let him go on drinking? There's that terrible phrase again, let him. It's not in our power to let anybody do anything, especially drink. If he wants to do it, he's going to do it. Are you saying the boy can't be helped? No, I'm just saying it's going to be rough. How well do you know the kid, Lucas? Apparently not well enough. Did I tell you we're going to a party Saturday night? And what if I don't want to go? Well, I guess I'll have to ask some other foxy chick, huh? Where's the party? Mark's. That whole gang? And now, what's the matter with them? They're my friends. Hi, Mr. Tanner. Hi, Terry. Looking for me? No, I was looking for Ron. Have you seen his car in the future? It's great. It was radio, heater, and air conditioning. How much is it going to run, Ron? <laughs> I don't know, but I get the first ride. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Mr. Tanner. See you, Terry. Yeah, I'll call you. Okay. We still have some talking to do. About what, Mr. Tanner? Let's start with that bottle of vodka. All right. So I took a drink. I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. How many drinks, Ron? How often? Are you trying to say I have a drinking problem? You need it to get through the day? Well, that's weird. My own father doesn't think I have a drinking problem. My mother doesn't. But my teacher, he thinks I have a drinking problem. OK, so I drink. Mr. Tanner, everybody drinks. In fact, I bet you even drink once in a while, don't you? Mm -hmm. What's your point? The point is, I don't know why we're talking about this. I really don't. No offense, Mr. Tanner, but please, get off my back. An alcoholic is anybody who is physically or emotionally dependent on alcohol. That takes in a large group. Believe it. Most drinkers don't even realize how dependent they become. When you're hooked, you're hooked. That's one of the ways they can wind up. I uh, take it this isn't just academic research. No, one of the other teachers gave me your name. He said you specialized in teenage alcoholics. And you know a kid who has a drinking problem. He denies it. <laughs> sure. Come on. He denied it, too. Withdrawal. Drying out process. He's lucky. He'll recover. How many do you cure? None. Zero. There is no cure for alcoholics. Thank you. Well, the lucky ones don't suffer brain damage. They can function normally as long as they don't drink. So what is it you want to know, teacher? If the kid's an alcoholic, for sure? Something like that. Well, if you have reason for concern, the answer is yes. And you want to know why? <laughs> OK. Mr. Tanner, if you live in this society, you have got to drink. Other kids don't. Well, not all of them. Not yet. 
but listen to me. We drink at weddings, at births, at funerals. We drink to celebrate or to forget. We drink before, during, and after meals. I mean, we drink as hosts, and we drink with our guests. I mean, you just try not to serve a drink to the next friend that you invite over to the house for dinner. <laughs> he will think you very rude. You're talking about adults. Who used to be kids? Who have kids? And the result is nine million alcoholics across the United States. And a half a million of them are kids. So, how are you going to turn one kid around? <laughs> I'm open for suggestions. Make like a teacher. Educate him. Will we listen? One to one? No way. But in a group, maybe. And even if he doesn't listen, maybe some other kid will. So what do you have to lose? Doctor, how long have you wanted to start an alcohol education program in the schools? That obvious, huh? <laughs> okay, okay. I made a few calls, I rang a few bells, but I, well, I didn't have enough clout. This way, well, I get a foot in the door. Yeah, my foot. I like the idea. Good, because we gotta get through to them. Somehow, I mean, we've got to convince them that, <laughs> make them recognize that alcohol can do more than remove your inhibitions and make you feel good. I mean, it sent 18,000 kids to an early grave last year. It's a dangerous drug. An overdose will kill you. Can you dig it? You bet. for your bathroom. Hey! Ron, can't you hear me? Why was your door locked? Sorry, Mom. I was in the middle of my yoga exercises. You know, standing on my head, breathing through my ears. <laughs> I didn't want you to walk in on that. Oh, you're too much. Oh, your dad's in the den waiting for you to watch the game. What game? Hmm, whatever game it is they're playing these days. Hockey. Hockey. Along the right Please, you do it, do it, do it. Hey, hey, hey! Hey, baby! Hey, baby, boy! Hey, Ronnie, when you just missed the score, where you been? Clean my room. You know Mom. Yeah, well, you get yourself a beer and join me. Um, you should have seen that. He slipped that thing right past the Montreal goalie. <laughs> Who's winning? Yeah, the Blues just tied it up. We're gonna beat the pants off these guys. I'll drink to that. Less than 18 seconds, Ed, and now the game is five. Margaret, the truth is some parents are glad their kids drink instead of taking drugs. Now, they're afraid of drugs, but they don't realize that alcohol is a dangerous drug in liquid form. I hope you realize you're telling this to a woman who enjoyed two martinis before her dinner last evening. Yeah, me too. Civilized thing to do. But did you drink in high school? <laughs> in my high school, it was practically unheard of. But did you? Well, yes, once. Why? Oh, my friends. With a cigarette in one hand and a drink in the other, we thought we were terribly sophisticated. Exactly. What about you? Normal. Uh, half the baseball team bought a cake of beer one time. I wasn't going to be left out. Normal, you said? Sure. It's okay because everybody does it. Well, I think it's time we started telling the kids it's not okay. Margaret, I want the auditorium any period Friday. We'll start with seniors. Do you have a program in mind? I'll work on it. It's short notice. I'm not sure I can clear the time. Try, please. Is this just an attempt to reach one boy? One that I know of. I can't even guess at how many others. I'll have to let you know. The orchestra uses the auditorium for rehearsals. I'm sure some of the teachers have scheduled tests. Margaret! I will try. You still haven't told me if you want to go to Mark's Saturday night. We have to. We're invited. And what can I tell them if we don't? Are his parents going to be there? I thought I told you. You didn't tell me anything. They're not, are they? No. Great, one of those. What is that? I don't want to go. Why not? Because everybody's going to laugh it up, and I'm the only one that won't say anything funny. It's just too stupid. Hey, I'll be there. Will you behave? Yeah, any way you want. Call it. Is that a promise? Uh-huh. Okay, I'll go. Good. I'd still rather go to an accordion concert. I thought you hated accordion. I do. Hi, Ross. Hey. Hey, Ross. Sister Tanner, I haven't finished yet. I'm working on it. What's that? The makeup work. We'll take it a step at a time. Read the assignments, and then we'll discuss it. Okay? Okay. Mr. Tanner? Yeah? I gotta go.
Are you going to be around? Almost always. I'll see you. See you around. Lucas, I'm glad I caught you. How does an assembly the last period on Friday strike you? Great. Can you give me some inkling what to expect? Some reality, Margaret. My name, My name is, is Jane. Jane. I'm an, I'm an alcoholic. alcoholic. I came, I came to your to school, school today to, to tell you what the life of an alcoholic is really like. like. You, may you may have read something about it or seen some movies about it. But I think it might be interesting if you heard it from someone who's been so drunk she couldn't tell whether she was putting her lipstick on her face or the bathroom mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I started stealing money from my mother's handbag to buy booze when I was nine. You can tell I was a late starter. By the time I was 10, I built up such a craving for alcohol that it took me six drinks just to find out it wasn't milk in my glass. <laughs> it was a lot of laughs, all right. Being too weak to get out of bed in the morning, and too sick to make it to the bathroom. My parents tried to help me. I got so much sympathy, I began to think it might be a good thing to stay drunk for life. Even when, Even the, when doctor the doctor told me that my insides were one step away from ground hamburger, I still figured I could beat the rap. You see, I had already figured out that my drinking was my parents' fault. So, one night when I was wandering down an alley having my dinner out of garbage cans, this man came up to me and asked if he could buy me a drink. I was already drunk, so one more seemed like a groovy idea. The next thing I remember, I, I had sold the man my body for $10 and given him $5 change. I know you're probably wondering what is an alcoholic. Some people will tell you that an alcoholic, somebody who can't get through the day without having a drink. Wrong. Lots, Lots of, alcoholics of alcoholics go for weeks without a drink. And then get drunk for five days or less. What about the kids our age? There are probably about 50 of you in the audience right now who are alcoholics. Or well on your way to becoming an alcoholic. All I can say to you fellow alcoholics out there is Get wise to yourself. Stop pretending. The only one you're fooling is yourself. If you can't stop drinking on your own, most of us can't. Ask for help. There's plenty available. And I'm here today to tell you about some of the places that you can get it. Mr. Tanner, do you believe that a child is a person? I mean, that he has a right to live his own life? Certainly. And a parent is supposed to give him love and support and friendship? Absolutely. You see, that's what we try to do with Ron. He has the freedom to do pretty much as he chooses, as long as he doesn't harm someone else. Suppose he's harming himself. Mr. Tanner, why in the world would Ron have to go out and drink? The bar is docked. If he needed alcohol, he'd only have to ask. Ron and I have a beer when we watch basketball, hockey, whatever's on television, he has one beer. Now, would you call that an alcoholic? Now, wait a minute. I only came to you because I thought you should be aware of the danger signals. Oh, Mr. Tanner, we do appreciate you taking the time to come here and talk to us. We just wish that there were more teachers like you. It's just that you haven't presented a very convincing case against Ron. Mrs. Gibbons, I am not trying to present a case against your son. What's the difference? You've as much as called him an alcoholic because you caught him drinking once in school and because some psychiatrist who's never seen him says he's in trouble. Right. Maybe the psychiatrist is 100% wrong, and that'd be the end of it. But just suppose he isn't wrong. There are half a million teenage alcoholics in this country, and it's possible, it's possible, that your son is one of them. Well, Mr. Tanner, if those half-million teenage drunks are like Ron, I'd say they ought to keep on drinking. Oh, Jack. 
No, no, I'm serious. Ron? What? I'm sorry you're not having a good time. Hey, buddy. My old drinking buddy. Hey. You ain't drinking, buddy. Put you up. Go on. Take it. No, not tonight. Dry spell hits Missouri. Ron Gibbons dies of thirst. <laughs> Mark, he promised me he wouldn't drink tonight. Miss Teenager doesn't approve. I don't think it's necessary. Maybe you're at the wrong party. Maybe I am. Hey, hold it. You guys do what you want. Terry's with me tonight. Oh, you're a lot of fun, too. A couple of statues. My parents are more laughs. Here's to the girl who lives on the hill. What she won't do, her sister will. <laughs> your turn, buddy. Or do you want the party to die on its feet? Isn't your dad gonna miss all this booze? Hey, I sprang for this myself. I had it delivered and signed dad's name to the bill. He'll never know the difference. Hey, Ron. Buddy. If you're not with us in spirits, you're not with us at all. my old drinking buddy. <laughs> sure you won't have one, Mr. Tanner? No, thanks. Do you have any kids? No. Well, they're great. They really are. Say what you want about Ron's generation. But I think those kids have got an awful lot on the ball. <laughs> you won't get an argument from me. All that hair and beads and hippie stuff, that didn't mean a thing. They were just trying to shake us up a little. Well, maybe we needed it. We haven't done such a great job with this world, have we? Jack, Mr. Tanner isn't here to discuss the state of the world. Now, what about Ron? What he told him, he's wrong. I thought he understood that. No. I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry hell, Mr. Tanner. I've had enough of you for one night. Why don't you go? Bug somebody else with your nonsense. I know my kid like the back of my hand. That wasn't like Jack. What you said about Ron, it really shocked him. But it didn't shock you. Well, Ron does drink sometimes. I've seen him come home at night when he he didn't know that I was still awake, and uh, he obviously had a few too many. Oh, I, I guess that, that sounds shocking that a, a mother would permit her son to do something like that, but he's always been so painfully shy, and he seems more outgoing. He, he has more friends. He's happier. And you think drinking brought that about? Well, I'm not implying that he's a drinker, Mr. Tanner, only that if once in a while he's had a few drinks and it's helped him over the hurdles, how terrible can that be? I think you know the answer to that. Well, Ron and his father have always been very close. I'm sure that he would never do anything to disappoint his dad. I'm sure he wouldn't. Thank you, Miss Gibbons. Good night. I'll let myself out. Don't know what Don't happened. Don't touch me. 
Just get out and let me drive. I'm sorry. Hi, Mr. Tanner. Ron. I gotta see you. Come on in. What's the problem? I had a little accident. My car went off the road. Are you all right? Yeah, fine. You sure of that? Yeah, we were pretty lucky. We? Was somebody with you? Terry. Is she okay? Oh, yeah. We were just pretty shook up. You're sure you're both all right? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, we went to the hospital. Terry had a little bruise on her forehead, and I had a little scratch here. Come on, sit down. Your parents know? No. I'd like to get myself together before I go home. Yeah, you'd probably scare your mother to death if she saw you like this. Hey, why don't you go upstairs and clean up? I'll get you some coffee. I didn't know where else to go. Please don't, Mr. Tanner. I've got to go home. Let's not waste time talking. You're hurt, right? Yeah, I wasn't hurt by the accident. I've drawn up blood before. This isn't the first time.
How do you feel? About what? Your head. How did you know about that? You okay? It's only a bump and a bruise. Well, I'm glad you had a doctor take a look at it. Did you tell your folks what happened? I told my mother I bumped my head in Ron's car. But you didn't tell her about the accident or about Ron's drinking? I didn't want to get him in any trouble. Terry, believe me, Ron's already got trouble. And it's not your fault. He can't stop drinking, can he? No, he can't. I don't know what to do. Maybe I shouldn't see him anymore. What do you think, Mr. Tanner? That's up to you. I don't know. When he hasn't been drinking, he's really nice. A little shy, maybe. But when he's around booze, whammo, Mr. Hyde. It's just not worth it, Mr. Tanner. Terry, wait up. Hey, Ron. How you feeling this morning? Great. You were feeling so great last time I saw you. Lay off, Mr. Tanner. Save it for the classroom. Ron? I want to help. Go to hell. Doc, you're right. It isn't easy. I thought I was beginning to make contact with Ron. I was wrong. You were. About a lot of things. I mean, that assembly, for instance. You should have been honest with the kid. You should have told him what to expect instead of springing it on him like that. I mean, he had to feel trapped. That's why he left. Sure it is. But he came to my house after his accident. He confided in me. He came to me for help. Oh, I bet you really felt good about that, didn't you? Okay. What did I do wrong? Well, what everybody else would have done. You held the kid's hands and said, Oh, gee, it's too bad. It's awful to be that sick. But he was spitting up blood. Oh, come on. Whose fault was that? Yours or his? Sure, you acted like a good teacher. And you blew it. So what else do you want to know? The right way to handle it. Mr. Tanner, I thought you'd never ask. Any damage? What about your damage, Ron? Yeah, there's nothing the matter with me. Okay, no lecture. I just want you to know where I stand. If I didn't care about you, Ron, I wouldn't bother. And I do care. You can tell me to shut up, get out, split, bug off anything. I want you to know what I feel. Mr. Tanner, I... going to take long. Why? Have you got something better to do? We'll find out what's causing the pain. It might take a while. Dr. Baker, to emergency. Dr. Doctor, Baker, what kind of shape is he in? Are you a member of the boy's family, Mr. Tanner? No, sir. I'm one of his teachers. Hmm. Well, I'll have to talk to his parents. I'll need their permission if I'm going to take this any further. It uh, might be a good idea to call them and have them come down. I'll call right away. Will he be all right? I don't know. We may have to admit him.
do you think you're going? To the bathroom. Well, that's the wrong way. Mr. Tarrant. There's no answer. Ron's gone. He's gone. The nurse just saw him leave the building. Do you have any idea where he might go? No. But I'll try to find him. If you do, bring him back. We'll be open. Thank you, Doctor. Why, why didn't he tell us about the accident? This throwing up blood. Why didn't he tell us about that? I don't know. Maybe he can't face what's happening to him. I'll make him face it. That's the worst move you could possibly make. Well, make up your mind, will you? You walk in here, you tell me my son's a drunk. An alcoholic. I say I'm going to make him face it. I'm going to make him give up the hard stuff. You say no. Mr. Gibbons, I felt the same way. I made the same mistake until I finally had it drummed into me. There is no way to make him stop drinking. You can padlock your bar. You can bolt the refrigerator. He's still going to find what he wants. Ron has always listened to us. We're his parents. An alcoholic doesn't have parents. He only has himself. It has to be his decision. He has to want to give it up or it won't happen. What can we do? Give him love. Give him understanding and support. That's all. You get angry with him, he's going to turn away from you. You get sympathetic with him, he'll pity himself. I want to tell you something, Mr. Tatter. I've never even seen that boy with a buzz on. Take a look, Pop. Bzzz. Now you've seen it. Ron. Hey, sport. Where you been? I've been around and round. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Tanner. You been spreading the good word? No, I've been waiting for you. No stuff. If I'd known that, I would have gone around again. Ronnie. <laughs> Mommy. Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a little drink to celebrate the new year. You don't mind if I'm a little early, do you? The only thing you're going to drink is some black coffee. You're loaded. Tell me about it. Mr. Gibbons, <laughs> don't try to stop him. The bar is closed, honey. This bar is never closed. <laughs> Jack, stop, man. Just let him go, please. Hey, let's hear one for Lucas Tanner, friend of the drinking man. Hooray! <laughs> I can't let him drink that stuff. It'll kill him. That's what you said, isn't it? Maybe. But it's his choice. Bull, I'm still his father. That's right, Daddy. Hey, why don't we have a drink together? Why doesn't everybody have a drink? <laughs> What's the matter, Ronnie? Boy, your insides are all messed up from that stuff. What are you trying to do, son? Mr. Tanner, tell him what I'm trying to do. Right now, he's trying to get a drink. Hey, could I have some ice? Mr. Gibbons, if you care about your son, let him alone. Let him drink himself to death. You're as crazy as he is, and you're not even drunk. I don't know what you're so uptight about. Mr. Tanner doesn't care if I drink. I believe in you, Ron. I know you can stop drinking if you want to. Honey, alcoholism is a sickness. It can be treated. Mom, forget it. I am not an alcoholic. Then put that bottle down. No, I'm going to have a drink. Ron, your parents love you. And they're frightened for you. Well, I'm not frightened. Because I know you can get out of this by yourself. You, Ron. You have the choice. You have the power. Your mom and dad are trying to help you the best way they know how. But you and I know it isn't up to anyone in this room except you. I respect you, Ron. I have faith in you. And I believe in you. You know that's true. You know I believe in you. I'm not laying some kind of trash on you. This is it. This is how I feel. That's why I'm going to turn my back on you right now and walk out of here. Let you think about it. But You're not going. Not what are we going to do with him? Nothing. He's going to do it himself.
name is Ron. I am an alcoholic. I'm not sure if I should be here, but I know I have to start somewhere. This might be the place. I sure hope so. I uh, guess that's all I have to say. Mm -hmm.